So does it mean it starts? Or, hmm, if not now, when? If not now, when? So you get this email saying, hey, can you do this Ignite session? Can you talk or, and the slides are gonna change on you just like that, and you think you can write notes and follow along, or you think you can read, and then you wonder what you're even talking about, or what you're going to talk about. And then when it's 12 o'clock, and you say, I gotta send these slides tonight, because tomorrow I'll be on the plane, and I won't get them there by noon, what you gonna talk about? And a couple of names come up in my mind, Bob Moses being one of them. And here's what I came to find out, because I've heard about CMC South for years. Is there one person out there who's willing to do what you need to do to make a difference? And I continue to think about papers and books that I read, and I'm supposed to not move forward. And this one paper here is driving my conversation tonight by Rochelle Gutierrez. And so what I want to do is talk to you about this, because I'm looking for one who's willing to Press in, press for explanation. When you hear someone say something that's so whacked, that's undervaluing your students, that's got this deficit talk, are you willing to press in and press for explanation? Are you willing to say to them, say more about that? I'm not sure I fully understand. Can you give me an example? Like when a principal tells me, my students are in seventh grade level, no, elementary level, and she's a high school principal. Tell me more. Or, when you look at a counter with evidence, when you're confronted with a representation of students, like this principal said to me, all of my students are, I'm like, no, you're trying to tell me they're doing fourth grade math? The math your daughters are doing? So I asked her for some examples, and I give her back examples. And so what you have to be willing to do is learn and find those counter examples. The opposing narrative, that's what we have to write. That's what we have to talk about. That's what we have to be ready to stand up and do. When you think about number three, use the master's tools. What are those tools? Hmm. Anybody got any policies, any practices out there? And you're like, man, this is whacked. I really don't want to do this, but I have to because. Well, how do you find ways to do what is in the best interest of your students? and justify with the language that is valued in the school setting. Do what's in the best interest of your students, but justify it. Somebody who stood up, was an example, was on a model for me as a black man. Father not home in my household, only my grandfather, but Lee Stiff was someone who I could see from a distance as NCTM president and set an example. Number four. Turn a rational issue into a moral one. Sometimes you're talking to people and the logic that you're trying to figure out what logic are they using? It's like, come on, what, what, this isn't even making sense. So what you have to do is think about how do you turn that conversation into one that highlights our moral character? Is this what we really stand for? Are we really trying to do this to our students? Would you want your child to go through that? Mm. And then sometimes, it ain't worth the fight. You recognize the politics that are so involved with it, and you know you will lose. So what you gotta do is fly under the radar. Sometimes you just gotta be quiet about it and do what you're gonna do. Don't ask. Ask for forgiveness, not permission. Do what you think you actually need to do. Remember what Bob Moses says, you don't need a hundred people in here for us to start a revolution, for us to make a change. We need one person, one person who's willing to lock arms, one person who's willing to never be afraid to make some noise and get good and, to, and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. And that's what John Lewis said in past president. So I want you to think about what you need to do to get in good trouble. And what I really came to CMC South was, was to find some allies, to find some individuals who were willing to stand up and lock arms, and let's go make a difference for our students. Willing to stand up and lock arms and be balcony people, a balcony person. That person is planting those seeds. That person is encouraging. That person like Elise Stiff was. 
that person like Elise Stiff was, who I remember meeting him in San Diego, I believe it was. And he said, I'm watching you. I got my eyes on you. They just met him. But what he was was an encourager. So I came here to find out where are the rest of the allies? Who's willing to stand up and go out here and fight for our children? Who's willing to be an insubordinate mathematics teacher? I dedicate this conversation, I dedicate my night talk to Lee Stiff. I think about a song that he would probably be singing now. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let your light shine.